Good day, kiddos. It's Grandpa Ken. Thanks for joining us. I'm wearing my English hat today because we're going to read an old English story. It's a fun one, and it's one I've read to kids for, oh, so many years I can't even remember as many. But everybody get settled down, and everybody get comfortable, because we're going to talk about the tale of Johnny Town Mouse. Okay? Johnny Town Mouse was born in a cupboard. Tim Willie was born in a garden. Tim Willie was a little country mouse who went to town by mistake in a hamper. Oh no, he was trapped in a hamper. That's where you put your dirty clothes. Well, they used them different back in these times. The gardener sent vegetables to town once a week by the carrier. He packed them in a big hamper. See the picture of the hamper there? Yeah. So Tim Willie was inside the hamper. The gardener left the hamper by the garden gate so that the carrier could pick it up when he passed. Tim Willie crept in through a hole in the wicker work, and after eating some peas, Tim Willie fell asleep in the hamper. He awoke in a fright while the hamper was being lifted in the carrier's cart. Then there was a jolting and a clattering of horses' feet. Other packages were thrown in for miles and miles and jolts and jolts and miles and jolts and miles. And Tim Willie trembled amongst the jumbled up vegetables. He was afraid. And look, he was bouncing around in that horse-drawn buggy. It had to be bouncy, huh? At last, the cart stopped at a house where the hamper was taken out carried in and sat down. Oh, at last. The cook gave the carrier sixpence, which is about a dollar. The back door banged and the cart rumbled away, but there was no quiet. There seemed to be hundreds of carts passing, dogs barking, <laughs> boys whistling in the street. The cook laughed and the parlor maid ran up and down stairs and a canary sang with a steam engine. What? Tim Willie, who had lived all his life in a garden, was almost frightened to death. Presently, the cook opened the hamper and began to unpack the vegetables. Out sprang Tim Willie, terrified. Up jumped the cook on a chair, screaming, A mouse, a mouse, a mouse, call the cat, call the cat, fetch the poker, Sarah. Tim Willie did not wait for Sarah with the poker. He rushed along the skirting board till he came to a little hole and popped in. See, see a little hole, he popped in, because that's what mice do. They get inside the walls. He dropped half a foot, and crashed into the middle of a mouse dinner party, breaking three glasses. Who in the world is this? Who, who, inquired Johnny Town Mouse. But after the first screaming of surprise, he instantly recovered his manners. Look at, see? Tim Willie fell right in the middle of the table where they were eating. That would be a surprise. With the utmost politeness, he introduced Tim Willie to nine other mice, all with long tails and white neckties. Tim Willie's own tail was insignificant. Johnny Town Mouse and his friends noticed it but they were eh, too well-bred to make personal remarks. Only one of them asked Tim Willie if he'd ever been in a trap. That had to be uncomfortable. The dinner was of eight courses, not much of anything, but truly elegant. All the dishes were unknown to Timmy, Tim, Timmy Willie, who would have been a little afraid of tasting them, only he was very hungry and very anxious 
to behave with company manners. The continual noise upstairs made him so nervous that he dropped the plate. Never mind, they don't belong to us, said Johnny. Why don't those young youngsters come back with the dessert? It should be explained that two young mice who were waiting on the others went skirmishing upstairs to the kitchen between courses. Several times he had come rumbling in, squeaking and laughing. Tim Willie learned with horror that they were being chased by the cat. His appetite failed. He felt faint. To some jelly, said Town Mouse, look at them running from the cat. That's scary for a mouse, I'll bet, huh? No, would you rather go to bed? I, I will uh, show you a most comfortable sofa pillow. The sofa pillow had a hole in it. Johnny Town Mouse quite honestly recommended it as the best bed, kept exclusively for visitors. But the sofa smelt of cat. Tim Willie preferred to spend a miserable night under the fender. Goodness. It was just the same next day, noisy and, and, and making him nervous. An excellent breakfast was provided for the mice accompanied to eat bacon, but Tim Willie had been reared on roots and, and salad. Johnny Town Mouse and his friends racketed about under the floors and, and came boldly out over the house in the evening. Uh, one particularly loud crash had been caused by Sarah tumbling downstairs with the tea tray. There were crumbs and sugar and smears of jam to be collected in spite of the cat. Tim Willie was astonished. They lived with a cat and he chased them. Tim Willie longed to be at home in his peaceful nest in the sunny bank. The food disagree disagreed with him. The noise prevented him from sleeping. In a few days, he grew so thin that Johnny, town mouse, noticed it and questioned him. He listened to Tim Willie's story and inquired about the garden. It sounds rather a dull place. What do you do when it rains? When it rains, I sit in my little sandy burrow and shell corn and seeds from my autumn stores. I peep out as the fossils and the blackbirds on the lawn and my friend Cock Robin. And, and when the sun comes out again, you should see my garden and the flowers, roses and pinks and, 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 and pansies and uh, no noise except the birds and bees and the lambs and the meadows. See, that was his home. That's where he wanted to go back to. And he missed it. Well, John, Johnny Town Mouse. There goes that cat again, Johnny Townhouse yelled. When they had taken refuge in the coal collar, he resumed the conversation. I confess I'm a little disappointed. We have ende endeavored to entertain you, Timothy William. Oh, yes, yes, and you have been most kind. But I do feel an, a little ill, And said Tim Willie. It may be that your teeth and digestion are unaccustomed to our food. That happens when I go someplace and eat other food. Sometimes my tummy hurts. Perhaps it might be wiser for you to return to the hamper. Oh, 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 cried Tim Wally. Why, of course, for the matter of that, we could have sent you back last week, said Johnny, rather, rather hopefully. Did you not know the hamper goes back empty on Saturdays? Oh, look at he could have went, been home last week. Oh, no. So, Tim Willie said goodbye to his new friends and hid in the hamper with a crumb of a cake and withered cabbage leaf. And after much jolting, he was set down softly in his own garden.